Welcome, 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 everyone, friends, Romans, Greeks, everyone from around the world to another glowing episode of Come On Now Podcast. I am your lovely host and moderator, Don, not to convince me, well, confuse me with Don King. My hair is a lot more lap. I'm not going to let Nick uh, tell me that my hair is not more lavish, but it's out right now. I'm going to see Renee at 7 a.m., so I'll be back next week looking lavish. With that being said, let's kick it off to my lovely co-hosts and the stars of this show. Guys, introduce yourselves. I'm the man that need no introduction. Y'all already know me by now. If you've been listening, you know who I am. It's Nick coming in with the hot topics, the hot picks, uh, former CFL. Player three championships in that league. Um, former NFL player with the Minnesota Vikings. A brief stint with the Jets, probably like a week, and they got me out of there. Rex Ryan, fuck you. Um, and then uh, <laughs> Division One basketball player for three years, starting point guard for Florida International University. Um, and I ran a 4-2. I'm really freaking fast, and I like to talk even faster. What's going on, everybody? My name is Rudy Rodriguez Shoma. By now, you should know who the hell I am. I'm loud and I'm brash and I'm obnoxious and all those things. And I'll say a whole bunch of shit that might piss you off and a whole bunch of shit that you're thinking that you're afraid to say. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to go for another great week. And uh, one message to everyone. Thank you for subscribing. We are 15 subscribers away from 300. Ooh. Help us get there this week by Sunday. 300. We have well over 160,000 views just on YouTube, another 100,000 on Instagram. Follow us, subscribe, like, comment. Facebook and Instagram, come on now. Podcast, TikTok, and Twitter, X, come on now pod. Back to you, Don. Thank you for that lovely segue. We're going to jump right in. It's March. You guys know what that means. We're outside of NFL football. We're getting closer to NBA playoff basketball. But let's not forget March Madness. March Madness. Diaper Dandy. Guys, what do you think? What's your picks? What are your thoughts? Men's, women's, NCAA attorney. What do you guys think? All I thoughts. I ain't watching that shit. That shit boring. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just fucking around. The NCAA, the NCAA tournament. Um, Always riveting. It's always fun because you're always going to have the upsets. The first week is the first, is the best week because of the upsets. After that, the tournament, especially for the men's, will, will probably slow down and die down just because we don't know, even know who the heck is playing. Unlike the women's tournament where we got a lot of big stars, a lot of studs, and we're probably more in tune with that. It's probably not going to be great basketball. They're probably going to be throwing the ball over the backboard a few times. But we are going to watch it because they do have the entertainment factor going on for them. Like, we are in tune with what's going on over there. It's fun. Um, they have rivalries that, that people don't like each other. You got um, LSU. You got South Carolina. Don't like each other. You got LSU. You got Iowa. Don't like each other just because of the whole, you know, Reese versus Caitlin thing that went last year. And that will be more interesting this year. You know why? Because some genius decided to put them in the same freaking side of the bracket. I, I thought that would be something that they would kind of like do a little bit more strategically where they could get all four of the big teams that everybody kind of want to see matched up in the championship. But I also know how things work. At least we probably get to see them around the least the elite eight. I mean, I guess rather knowing that more than likely they're going to play rather than the chance that all of them make it to the championship on their side is a little bit differently. You know, you look at it a little differently from that scenario. You're kind of hoping that that happens. So more than you gave us, you gave it to us where we will actually more than likely see them. So we at least get one of them. Um, so in that one, I'm going to pick, I'm picking LSU to come out of it for the women. For the men's, um, I'm picking Alabama to come out of it. I like wait, that. Wait, you said you picked LSU to win the national championship? For women? Yeah. Yes. Who's your final four? I have them. I have USC and I have South Carolina. I mean, South Carolina and I think it's, um, I have 
Uh, you got okay. Um, for the uh, men's side, I got I, 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 actually you. I can't you have can't, you can't have USC and UConn because they play they each other in the Elite Eight. It wasn't them. It was um was it Stanford. It's one of them that I had on the other side. Stanford and Texas are on the other side. So yeah. who are you picking? USC or UConn? I'm picking USC. I'm going with you. All right. I mean, it's kind of you know not really giving you much of a thing on that one because the Juju just is. I'm just going with the study in that certain situation. I'm rolling with her over page and, and the girls over there at UConn. The men's side, I got Alabama. I'll tell you my final four after we go. Oh, you're going to tell them after? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I, I'm going to treat for, the final four before I tell okay. you. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, the whole thought process of the men's final men's tournament is irrelevant to the women's. Exactly. It's based on it's based on th- on three players. It's not based on anything else other than that. Three players and a couple of rivalries because. It's real easy to say you can't name players in the men's side. The men's tournament has been destroyed by Women. early departures and the constant transferring that goes on. So you never know who the hell's on any team anymore, and that's part of the problem. Everyone transfers. There's 2,000 players that are already in the portal. Rudy, another thing is the, the one-and-done mm-hmm. rule is... The one-and-done rule is just, is hurt the NBA. I mean, it's hurt college basketball. Yeah. I, I wish they would just erase it, let them turn pro. Um, they can go play in the G League or go or wherever the hell. But if you're going to be one and done, don't even go to college because it's it's really dest- it's destroyed college basketball. It should be two years at least. It, it, and the NIL stuff has made a mess of it. But that said, the men's tournament's actually going to this. It's already kicked off tonight. It's going to be fireworks. Of course, people are going to sit here and say they're going to watch the women. You're not going to pay attention to the women until the Elite Eight. Yes. That's the reality. You're not going to watch one fucking game until the Elite Eight. Because you'll, you'll you watch, don't know. Huh? You'll watch Caitlyn early you're, on. That, fine. But I'm talking about you're yeah. not watching 16 games on yeah. Friday and 16 games on Sunday. You're not yeah. doing that. Let's get at that bullshit out of our head. It's not happening. No way. But I do have. Um, and the reality is in the women's tournament, you couldn't tell me who anyone is on any other team outside of the five teams. Those four or five teams. No one knows who they are. And we are, and almost always the seeding is almost always bored until the final four. That's Once in a while you have a few things, but for the mo- I mean, you've had more one you've had one seeds in the final four many, many times in the women's That's grade. Why I'm not really mad at them giving us the elite eight of possibly it's, it's, LSU. So win. First off, LSU is going to lose in the second round. They're going to lose to Louisville. No way. Um, no they're going to lose to Louisville. No way. The the reaction of that team when Haley Van Lith saw that Louisville was opposite. First of all, Louisville's good. So before you say no way, you've never seen Louisville play, I'm sure. I, I, I did see them play. Actually. No, not this year. Stop it. I haven't seen them play, so I'm not going to lie about it. You can I'm lie about it, you know, but I'm not going to lie. I'm not lying. I haven't seen them play, but I know they're still 24-9. and nine. Haley Van Lith has not performed anywhere near where she was last year. I and this is ESPN, and they right, were right. on, and I watched it for like twenty minutes. I, I did. All right, so you watched the half of a quarter. All right, and enough to see that I know I watch LSU more so times to know that they're going to beat them. Go ahead, I'm sorry. All right, we'll see how she plays when she plays her old team. We'll see how it goes. Okay, they're going to lose either way. They're not going to get there, and they're not going to beat Iowa if they somehow get past LSU. Like um, my, you're comparing an apple to an orange last year. LSU couldn't shoot the ball last year. See, that just shows me you you weren't paying attention. LSU couldn't shoot threes last year. Okay. LSU couldn't shoot. And then all of a sudden, the fight in the championship game, they had the greatest shooting performance of their season by a mile. There's so two. they had that one, they had the one perfect game on the wrong the one perfect night. Oh, and it was and it what can I finish, dude? And it wasn't even Angel Reese. She was the fourth leading scorer that night. They the girl off the bench came out and dropped like 20 in the first half. She couldn't miss a three. Game was 102 to 85. Like, let's be honest. They had the perfect game on the perfect night. That's it. And congratulations. They won the championship. They're not going to beat Iowa this year. The team is a mess internally. You can see it. LSU is going to lose in the second round. I'm marking it down. My Elite Eight, <clears throat> since I go deeper, because I have South Carolina, Notre Dame, Iowa, UCLA, Texas, Stanford, USC, UConn. 
In my final four, I got South Carolina facing off against Stanford, and I got UConn versus Iowa, and I have Iowa versus South Carolina in the championship. And yeah, I'm going out. I'm going to say Iowa's going to win the national championship. Caitlin Clark's going to bust out 40 in that game. She's on the greatest game of her life, and she's going to shut every fucking idiot up who said that she can't win the championship, even though she's got a gold medal. She won't win. Okay. She won't win. Okay. Are you, wanna, you wanna bet on that LSU game that'll never happen? Yeah. There's another fake bet that you're not gonna fucking you're gonna say that you do that you don't really believe in? Exactly. Wow. And Louisville will beat LSU wow. in the second round. Yeah. Mark it down. All right. But again, no one's gonna care about the women's basketball tournament until the Elite Eight. And and people keep lying about it, they're not going to. The men's tournament, I got three 12 seeds get into this to, to the sweet 16. I got Three eleven seeds getting advancing out of the first round. The men's game has so much parity now that you have no idea who's going to win. You really don't have any idea. Now, I hate the idea when I see people go bored and say everyone's going to be a one seed. One seed's never happened in the men's final four. It happened, I think, like twice. It's very, very rare. So, but yet, when you get down to it, I ended up being close to having four one seeds. <laughs> you know, uh, I got a uh, UConn versus Drake. In uh, in the Elite Eight, I got UNC against Arizona. I wish UNC wasn't a one seed because I don't think they're really a one seed, personally. But they are a one seed, and I'm pulling for UNC because my Hurricanes are gone, so I'm a Tar Heel fan as well. I got Purdue and Tennessee. I think Purdue will finally avoid getting bumped early. And and people can say what they want. Zach Eady is a monster of a guy inside. And people can say he, could not, he may not have the ability to be successful in the NBA. I don't think that's true if they actually used him properly. But that's neither here nor there. Houston and Kentucky is in the in the other side. So I got UConn. Um, I got uh, UConn advancing, UNC advancing, Tennessee advancing, and Kentucky. And you'll have Tennessee versus Kentucky in SEC matchup, and UNC versus UConn. I got UNC beating UConn and Tennessee, Kentucky beating Tennessee, and UNC beating Kentucky in the national championship. Okay. It'll probably be wrong. No, no, definitely. UConn, UConn is a monster squad. Let me tell you right now, UConn's schedule wasn't that great. They did beat they did beat UNC early this season. They did have some big wins early this season. But they you know what? It's one thing when you're the four seed and people overlook you. Now you're the hunted. You have that one bad day, you lose. Are they gonna have that same type of fire that they had last year? Look, realistically, UConn should win the national championship game. They're probably the best team in the country. Um, but again, the best team doesn't always win in the co- in college basketball. So that's my uh, final four for both sides. So Go I, ahead. Got, I got UConn. I got the top scoring offense in 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 college, Alabama. I got so this is my upset. I got team like fools the other week when I had them against the bet against uh, South Carolina. I'm going with Florida as the seventh seed coming up. And then I got Purdue. I like the big man. Big man lead the league, lead the uh, college in scoring. I like him. I got Purdue, Florida as the seven seed being upset. There's always one team that does it. Who are they upsetting in that in that in that side? They got, they got North Carolina. I think they got Duke. And you think they're gonna beat? No, well Duke's not. Duke's not on the same side as North Carolina. No, so Houston, it's Houston, done. Houston. And I don't like Houston. Yeah, you like Houston? You saw I think happened? Houston. I think Houston's gonna lose to. Uh, yeah, you saw what they did. Kentucky. They okay. didn't lose to Kentucky. Okay, okay, exactly. And and Florida just lost their starting center. I, I still like Florida. Oh, by the way, Kansas is done. Kansas oh, will be no. out in the first round. No, they'll be they done. Just, they just lost their best player. He's I out. I've seen that. I've seen that. He's and out. they've not been good. They got beat by 30 by Houston. Kansas, I, the, look, I'm sorry real quick. The just, seedings um, in the men's tournament are ridiculous. Houston just lost their championship game. I know. I know. They lost, they lost to Iowa State, who's a two seed. They play great defense, though. They're one of the. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they won. They were the Big Twelve champion regular season. So I mean, they lost to the number two team in the Big Twelve re- regular season. So yeah, they got wop. They got walloped. But I just think the seedings, like you have team. Why Michigan State is in the tournament again? It's like the Tom Izzo. You gotta get, and then they'll win, they'll win. Well, they'll no, win. they won't. They're gonna be out in the first round. I'm so sick of watching these fucking undeserving Big Ten and Big Twelve teams, and now as. The ACC's got four or five teams. Every year about Tom Izzo. And then they- yeah, and you want to know what? They lo- he loses a whole lot. He loses a whole He's out one national championship. And, and, bro, they, they, but they also said the ACC couldn't compete. 
The ACC had a team in the, in the Final Four last year. Two years before that, they had two teams in the Final Four. Yet the ACC is getting shit on on a year-to-year basis. It's crazy. But I got nothing left for it. I'm looking forward to Thursday when I'll be sitting in front of my TV for from 12 noon to midnight, Thursday wow. and Friday. And then I have to watch on Saturday. And Sunday, I'll be watching while I'm at my my baby shower for my son, I'm actually my newborn. Gonna in. I'm actually going to tune in a bit. I wasn't going to, but I will. Hmm. What else to Good do talk, at 12 guys. o'clock on Thursday? Good talk, guys. All NCAA. We, uh, the gamblers are excited about this week and the next two weeks. They're really, really excited in Vegas and Atlantic City. But as we segue... Oh, I'm sorry, real quick. I was in Vegas one time, the first weekend of March Madness, watching the gambling degenerates of the world. And I was one of them that weekend. Watch a 36-point game and screaming in the 36-point game because the spread's 35 and a half. Is the greatest thing ever. You're That's not, all. You're not even it's bad. never over. Yes. Ben, no. you, you gave a team 36 points to start the game. So 36 to 0. Like, okay, they'll never come back to that. But teams lose by 40 and things in that nature. But imagine being that team that you got that upset and, and your team is hanging on at halftime. They're only down five. Next thing you know, they're down 46. Yeah. I'm sorry, Donald. That was I just wanted to throw that in real quick. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm not going to rip your head off this time, Rudy. Um, that was actually a great story. But we're going to segue in and, and talk about some NFL. Um, I'm going to tell a story for you guys. You guys ever go to a, a restaurant and feel you got one up on them? Like they gave you a free meal or you give them 18 bucks and they gave you $54 worth of food. Like things just are just lopsided. You ever had those days? I feel like that's how the Pittsburgh Steelers woke up the next morning. When they got Justin Fields for a bag of sour cream and onion chips. Um, it wasn't even hot Cheetos that everyone loves. It was like sour cream and onion that's in the back of public supermarkets. Publix cut the check. Uh, that's how I feel they feel. So what are your guys' thoughts? Uh, Mitchell Trubisky, Kenny Pickett turned into Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. What are your thoughts? You, you want to go, Rudy? Um, one, I, I think Russell Wilson is a steal for them. Um, they're getting him from 1.2 million Denver's paying his contract. So it's a steal. Do I think Russell Wilson's a great quarterback? No, I don't. I never have. I've never thought he was that good. Even when he was at Seattle, I think he was the beneficiary of the greatest defense of that decade. Um, and the Legion of boom and, and, and realistically a monster running attack and, he benefited from that. Did he get better as he got older? Yeah, but early on, his success was largely predicated on running the ball and a great, great defense. The more they let him throw the ball, he got he got sacked a ton because he tried to extend plays. Um, they always blame the offensive line, but I think a lot of sacks nowadays with quarterbacks who are mobile happen because the quarterback doesn't get rid of the ball when he should and throw it away. Now... Is he is he good enough? Is he better than what they had? Yeah. He's better than what Pittsburgh had. But this Justin Fields thing, it's fucking embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing to see that this is like a ski mask job. A fifth round pick for the starting quarterback. Uh, I don't care if he played for the Bears. I don't care if he wasn't successful. He's in his third year. Third year, fourth year, whatever? 24. Huh? 24 years old. He's, he's a young kid, like, and he's played in a place of disaster. And you get him for a fifth round pick. I think it could be up to a fourth. Yeah. I think it's a sixth round. Like, what the f- – like, what, what's going on? Does, does, did any other team in the league reach out to the Bears about this? Dolphins, where the fuck were you? You didn't call for this guy? Like, what is going on? You did not call the Bears to offer a fourth or fifth round pick? And the Dolphins would have given them a second round pick. That's what the Dolphins do. They always overpay. You didn't give a fourth or a fifth round pick for Justin Fields? I'm, I'm floored that Pittsburgh got that. I mean, I would say this. Justin Fields might be starting by the middle of the season. If Russell Wilson is not performing, Justin Fields is starting. 
I think this whole thought that Russell Wilson's the starter is completely flawed. He's going to learn. Yeah, I guess he could learn, but let's not act like this kid can't play. This kid can play. He can play. And Mike Tomlin is probably the perfect guy for him. He's probably the perfect coach for him. Um, it's, I mean, he's back in the, I mean, back in the Midwest area type of type of environment. He's not the Midwest. Type. I mean, Pittsburgh is it the Midwest? I guess it's close. It's close to Ohio. You know, it's right right, right over the border. So you, you you have that Midwest feel that that steel city, that rough and tough, like that Ohio State thing. And, you know that type of environment. He's been in that environment. I think it's a great thing for for Justin Fields. I think fuck. I think Pittsburgh got a steal, and it wouldn't shock me if he wins the starting job. Personally, I would be. I would not be surprised because if they get get a real competition, because if we're really putting these two guys side by side, are you really going to start Russell Wilson? I don't even know how is Russell Wilson thirty five now. I don't know how old he is. Close to it. Yeah. You really going to start Russell Wilson over Justin Fields right now? I wouldn't. I would not. But either way, they're in a much better position. And, and I think that was a, I mean, Mitchell Trubisky and Kenny Pickett, and you got Russell Wilson and Rudolph Justin Rudolph. Fields. That's a ski mask, a ski mask job. Rudolph is solid. Um, man, this whole Justin Fields situation is, is kind of crazy to think about it, just how it played out. Because um, like you said, literally anybody could have got, got him. But I think that the Chicago Bears played their hand kind of wrong. They thought that they could get more for him, and they could have got more for him early on, but I'm pretty sure there's trades out there for at least a second or third. And they're like, nah, nah, he's worth more than you can get out like a first out of there. And then the free agency played out, and people like, nah, I'm going to get this quarterback for the cheap, this quarterback for the cheap, this quarterback for the cheap. And then it just put them in a situation where they're like, damn, the only thing we could do is dump him or keep him. And then now you're going to have two quarterbacks. You're going to draft that guy. You're going to draft Caleb, and now you're going to be stuck with two quarterback, young quarterbacks on your roster. But, um, I mean, I'm not so enamored about it as y'all are, man. Um, unless you're going to build an offense totally around him, you need to be doing more RPO things. He cannot read the field. He's terrible at that. You can't make the reads. You can't drop back. You can't stop on the, on the three-step and plant and know it's coming up and get the ball out when he should. He doesn't do those things. But if you put him in an RPO offense where he could, you know, hold the ball and read the end and see if he got to hand it off or hold it, or if the linebacker come up, he could hit that slant right behind the back window, then, yeah, okay, I'm okay with that offense. Are you talking about just a pro-style offense where he's reading defenses and, and seeing when, when they're in cover two or in cover three or somebody's robbing from a different area? I No, I'm, I don't like him in that situation. So I'm not so high on that one. Russell Wilson, I think he can play. Can he be, I mean, for that deal that they got, for one year? Hell yeah. I do that any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Because, you know, you're getting him for one million. So that frees up your cap to go get a couple other players with him. He got, a, he got an amazing tight end. He got a good receiver out there. Maybe they need another weapon. They need one more receiver out there that's solid with them. Um, I'm not such down on Russell as early in his career because that's every young quarterback for the most part. Their defense carried him. Tom Brady, defense carried him to championships, and then later on, he got better, just like Russell did. Russell has fallen off. I like him as a starter from day one. I'm not so high on the Justin Fields throwing him out. They might be out there mid-year just because of how their record might be. But, no, not so high on it. Don't you don't know. think it should be a competition for the quarterback position? I think y'all are, y'all are going to say that this is the craziest thing ever. I think Justin, I think they should have a development league for some, some of these quarterbacks. I think Justin Fields should probably be playing in the CFL on a wider field and learn how to throw the ball a little bit better. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, that's probably one of the hardest places to throw the ball as a quarterback. The field is wider. To make them outside throws, you're going to have to learn how to play that game. And that will also help you in the NFL game where the field is smaller, you know, and the windows are, you know, it's a little tighter, but the throws are a little, a lot shorter. So, I mean, I just want to see him playing and develop. I don't think he's going to get that, that time to do that. And the thing about football now is a microwave game. you got to be ready to play in a year or two. But in a long time ago before, they let quarterbacks develop. Now you're not letting them do it. And that's probably a hurting Justin in a way that's, you know. That's a league issue across that's the board. League. That's a league issue. This, this force feed, this force, I'm sorry. And they and they need like five years, but that's just not what it is anymore. 
it, it's a league issue where they're force feeding these rookies into this into starting jobs who should not be starting immediately. Yeah, most and it's players, happening. It's happening over and over again. It happens everywhere, and it's yeah, a problem because nobody we, can, nobody can wait. Coaches are getting yeah, fired. but you have to be an owner and an and 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 organization that understands. And and you know what? You can't bend over because your fans are screaming. Because let's be real, Patrick Mahomes was a bench warmer his first year. He watched with the clipboard, and they were thirteen and three. I think something like that. So we people ignore the fact that, you know, Patrick Holmes didn't inherit a, a trash can. He inherited a, a great freaking team, so, and, and he made it better. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers sat for three years. Like, these guys don't get a chance to truly learn. Even Tom Brady sat his first year. Lamar Jackson sat. Everyone sits. Like, this new shit where everyone got to start immediately is ridiculous. These guys aren't getting the experience, that, and you know, to even the, the education to get used to this type of play. I, I I agree with you. I drafted him first. I got to put him out there. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. That no, mentality you don't. destroyed Baker Mayfield early on. It destroyed Johnny Manziel completely. It destroyed a lot of quarterbacks who couldn't take the pressure initially on what could be. And it's, I, I mean, it's killing that. Zach Wilson. It's Zach killed Zach. Zach. Huh? I think that destroyed Johnny. Johnny has the buzz. Well, he was a junkie. He was a junkie. But, I mean, a lot of those things are have, have something to do with that. I mean, he... And and you, but Mitchell Trubisky shouldn't have been starting in Chicago. Like all these guys are starting and being forced in there as as rookies. It's ridiculous. But did Daniel Jones start as a rookie? No, I think yeah. he had another plan in, in effect. Was it Tyrod Taylor? He, he was playing as a rookie, as far as I remember. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a Giants fan, but mm. he still sucks. No, he's terrible. He should never have been drafted where he was drafted. He's been a fifth round pick. I mean, but whatever. Well, we'll be going back into my. White privilege conversation. <laughs> yeah. But um, a lot of teams could have got Justin, though. I mean, I would give him a chance. Knowing you ain't got to rush into that contract, let it play out. That's probably what the Steelers are going to do. Not going to get that fifth-year option, even though it's still cheaper for most quarterbacks that's going on right now. But and and by, the way, by the way, the most recent NFL mock draft has um, the, the, the great uh, – White North, well, just south of the Great White North, which is Toronto or where, right around that area, taking a uh, JJ McCarthy at the number four, being the Minnesota Vikings. On on that note, up. we're gonna we're gonna segue off. We're gonna segue. If the Minnesota off. Vikings do that, that that's the projection. Be, that would be Christian Ponder all over again. Hey, shout exactly. out to Christian Ponder. Give me a playoff check of ten grand. So I'm not too mad at Christian Ponder. He got us to the playoffs. But Adrian yeah. Peterson got us to the playoffs. Yeah. AAP 2,000 yards, definitely relax. not as there. Um, yeah, relax, relax. We're going to jump off this before I throw a virtual drink in Rudy's face. Um, not going to do that. We're going to. You hear that, guys? That's the crowd cheering for the people's champ, Rudy Rodriguez. Show my this week. I just feel like it's gonna be a doozy. Rudy, what are you mad about? Hit us with your rant. I'm not really all that mad now. I mean, to be honest, uh, the heat have already pissed me off enough. But you know, I I still haven't found my hat. It's back there somewhere um, from last week. But let me tell you something. This is this new mentality of these. I mean, by the way, first off, the the two dunks that we saw yesterday with Anthony Edwards and um, Jalen Johnson, Jesus Christ! You know he dislocated his finger on that dunk. That's why he didn't really celebrate. It popped. He popped his finger. Yeah. He didn't even see. He didn't remember that. He had to go watch it on video. But he didn't even you know he didn't even hit the rim. He just threw the ball in from like. A, but the one where the dude, huh? He jumped the, the other one, Johnson jumped over Austin Reeds, had his fucking nuts on his head. That yeah. was pretty disgusting. That was a tick off from down at the free throw line. He didn't actually really dunk the ball technically. He threw it in. Man, no, really, that's enough. Dunked I it. it down. <laughs> okay, Nick Wright. Nick Wright, this fucking worm on Fox Sports. And his first things first, or whatever show he's on now, I don't even know anymore. I used to watch his stuff. He's insufferable, LeBron James. I swear to God, LeBron James' doll must be on his night table because the abnormal admiration and love that he has for this man, it's borderline sociopath. It's kind of sick. 
There's a recent thing right now that's going on about how the 90s are done or some shit like that. Uh, huh? What? Yeah, yeah, 90s are done. Yeah, the 90s, because some fucking worm shit fucking TikTok dork who wasn't alive, who wasn't alive 25 years ago, is sitting here judging an entire generation of basketball off of a 12-minute stretch in an NBA Finals game because guys were fumbling the ball and missing some shots. Does this fucking idiot watch basketball today? I watched an all-star game where all-stars missed wide open threes at a 70% clip when nobody was guarding them. You don't need to talk right now. You don't need to talk right now. Let me go. Because you're one of these fucking people that push this narrative on this new age of pathetic basketball over and over again. So this guy says this. Nick Wright then makes some ridiculous commentary about the 90s as well and then talks about the, the, peak, the peak LeBron year and the peak Jordan year and whatever. The, man, Jordan's got four years that are better than LeBron's best year. If you want to keep it a buck. If you really want to look at it. But Nick Wright has his admiration and he has his LeBron James card and, you know, and God forbid he ever has a problem. LeBron James will hire him as part of his PR staff um, because there's no better PR guy for LeBron than Nick Wright. But this commentary about the 90s basketball, it gets real tiresome, you know, because there are a lot of things that were said in this video that also, like, include the fact that Le- Le- Magic Johnson couldn't dribble. Like, Magic Johnson couldn't dribble? Oh, he dribbled with his hand on top of the ball. Guess what, you dumb fuck from t- born in 2000? You had to dribble with your hand over the ball in 1985. You couldn't do this. This, this, that's a carry. That is illegal. You could not carry the ball. You can watch clip after clip after clip of traveling called constantly in the 80s. Always called. Now a guy can take six steps and not get called for traveling. The, the new fake gather dribble. The gather dribble didn't exist when you played basketball Nick, in 2006. You know that. You know it didn't exist. It did not exist. This whole, sh- it didn't exist when you were in college. This new world that created rules that empower the offense and give the offense all the advantage. Let's also remember they shortened the shot clock from 24 to 14 on misses and, um, you know, on misses and dead balls on rebounds. It used to be 24 to 24, 24 to 14. They wanted to have a higher pace game. So the, all these things were done by the NBA to speed up the game, even though in the 80s, guys, teams were scoring 115 points a game without shooting 45 threes a game. The whole mentality of, oh, now, Jordan missed an open shot. Okay, so LeBron doesn't miss open shots? I've seen him miss open layups. I saw Jimmy Butler miss an uncontested open layup. Last week alone. Have you wanted to punch my TV screen? These are professionals. They miss. It happens. But sitting here saying, oh, they're fumbling the ball. They can't dribble. Today's basketball players are allowed to literally carry the ball for five yards without getting called for traveling. Today's basketball player gets away with double dribble all the time. Today's basketball player gets breathed on. It's a foul. Today's basketball player doesn't compete on a level of which they actually truly seem to ever want to win because they quit a whole lot in today's basketball. Watching leads disappear because you're too stupid in how you play is exhausting. And motherfuckers like Nick Wright Perpet- Ash, you can sh- tilt your head, shake your head all you want, Nick, because the fact of the matter is, is the skill somewhat better? Yes, it is. They can shoot the ball better. Yeah, they can. Can they guard better? No, they can't. If they had to deal with a, if they had to deal with a real post presence, could anyone guard anyone? No, they couldn't. They'd be annihilated. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would be making sky hooks today, just like he made them fucking thirty-five years ago. And to say he wouldn't is bullshit. You know that. You're making the same sky hook that no one could guard back then. It's the most unguardable shot in NBA history. So, these 90s guys, you want to know who played in the 90s? Nick, you know who played in the 90s? Your number five player of all time played in the 90s. He sucks. You're right. Shaq. You know who else, you know who else played in the 90s? Your number three, three player of all time. Kobe, you're right. He sucks. You know who else played in the 90s? MJ, your number two player of all time. Oh, yeah, he sucks. So three of your top five players of the all time for you, Nick, played in the 90s. 
But the 90s is trash. Man, y'all can suck a dick. Tim Duncan started his career in the 90s. Akeem Olajuwon, 90s. Pippen, 90s. David Robinson, 90s. Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, Anthony Hardaway, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, Alonzo Mourning. Oh, did you like Allen Iverson? I think he did. He was that motherfucker, man. Ain't no, we're not counting those people. No, no. These, these idiot motherfucking clown monkey fuck little twats on TikTok start this bullshit up and don't fucks like Nick Wright carried on to national media because he has his, he has LeBron James scroll so far down his throat really? that it's in his fucking stomach. Really? It's some... embarrassing. The way they did, I'm not disrespecting this generation because these guys are good. I wish they played with some level of fucking true competitive spirit. Because they all want to be best friends. Jersey swap like little bitches after games. It's pathetic. They they lose a game and they want to hug each other. Back in the day, you didn't hug nobody when you lost, Nick. They went to what? fucking dinner together. They went to fucking what? dinner. They went to dinner together. Dude, they didn't do it like the day, man. They didn't, these guys are hanging out before they even play, man. Today's generation is full of... Nick, you wasn't even born. You had to do both. You had to do something, dude. Fucking stories about them golfing together. Fucking... Bro... Not Charles Barkley was best friends with fucking Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan were best friends. And you know what? On the court, Jordan fucking hated him. There wasn't yeah. no friendship. There wasn't no friend. There wasn't no jersey swaps. This fucking yeah. shit of today's generation. You know what? You created the softest generation of pussies on the face of the earth. And mm-hmm. people like Nick Wright. What is you? What is Nick Wright? You know what the thing about this is? And here's the comedy of this. There's gonna be someone in 20 years who's gonna be saying the same shit about. The next guy, and saying, LeBron James was garbage. Of course. And you fucking know it. And you know what, how, how stupid that will sound? No, the Jordan shit. Let me ask you. Jordan Keep it a buck. Jordan they don't go, like what? Jordan can't go left as stupid as fuck. That was, yes, and that was said in that stupid fucking video. Yeah, that, that was said. So yeah. let's, stop, let's stop making shit up. That's not true. Magic Johnson has better handles than most of these dudes right now. But he can't dribble the ball, carrying it like this all the fucking time. Are I you just, kidding? I just think because, I mean, Jordan. Isaiah I, Thomas didn't play today. Magic, oh, Nick. Magic Jordan. I mean, Magic, Magic dribbling was basic. That's the only reason I think they The think. passes that players made in the 80s and 90s, I never see made today. You want to know why? Because the game is one-on-one. The, game, the whole game is one-on-one. I'm sorry. It's drive and kick. Drive and kick. Drive and kick. It's all one-on-one basketball the whole game. There's no teamwork. That's why the San Antonio Spurs busted our ass in 2014 and should have beat us in 13. Because they could because shoot. team ball will always be individual ball. Because they could shoot the ball and they were, they, were they played like a team, Nick. It wasn't driving kick. No, it was a team fucking game. Of course. They they did drive and kick our ass to death. They moved the ball and drove the Nick, game. Nick, we didn't shoot 43 as a game in 2013, so stop the fucking narrative. How much it was not the same game. You watch the game. LeBron James, most of the shots were fucking from 20 feet. They were from 26 feet. So the San Antonio Spurs were average about 14 threes a game that they series made. Made. 14, and you know what? They shoot 45 today. So you just proved my point. You just proved my point. So the, the game wasn't a driving kick game. You still have post players who got their ass on the block like Tim Duncan and murdered our ass on the block as an old man. Did Tim Duncan murder us or did they hit threes? Like Addy Mills hitting threes. Was they hit threes. Nick, they, you just said they shot 14 threes a game. Make up your no, mind. You no, can't. I, I said made. Bro, they did not shoot fucking 45 like they do today. Every The game is different today and you know it. Been up and close. Yes. Yeah, because of the more people were shooting it than, than they could before. You don't have to be out there. Again, you're, you're, again, in 20 years, there will be some other fucking twat kid who says that LeBron James was trash. And you know how absolutely preposterous that will sound? Because let me tell you right now, I watched today's basketball. There's not a guy in the league right now that will be better than LeBron James in his career. Not even close. There won't be a guy right now in 20 years, if God, for, God willing, I'm still breathing, but At really, 66, really, huh? You're picking the top, picking the top I'm telling you right now, Nick, in 20 years, there will not be a current player outside of maybe Victor Wembayomama who will be a top 15 player of all time. Because these guys are not on that level. They're good. 
They're not on that level. Luca will be in top fifteen. Though. No, the fuck he won't. It's no, me. the fuck he won't. It's not that he wants me. It's not that he don't win. He's a lazy sack of shit defensively. He's slow as dog shit. He's not a fucking team guy. He shoots the ball way too goddamn much. You're the fucking point guard. You know who that sound like? Like the who? Two. Really? He wasn't a point guard, dude. Not the okay. I'm talking All about right. being a scorer. I'm sorry. Michael Jordan, the first team on NBA defensive player for half his career. I mean, yeah, you're right. He's not my. Yeah, he sounds like Michael Jordan, the guy who defended 94 feet against Luca, the guy who couldn't guard me. He if I had any speed. No, he definitely got Luca can't guard a parked car. Let's stop the bullshit. There's not a guy right now that you will say that you could unequivocally say will be a top 15 guy of all time in 20 years. But there's be some fucking dickwad kid who says, oh, I watched YouTube videos because today's games are being scored in the 200s. Luca needs one championship to be in the top 15. Does it? He needs one more than that. Are you serious? All right, all right, Nick. One championship. We can go. We, we can we can debate that another day because the top fifteen players, every one of them has more than one championship. Every one of them, every one of them has more than one ring. There's somebody. Every there. single one. Let me let me think about that. Really, Akeem, Shaq, Duncan, Dave Dave Ross is not the top fifteen, but he has he has two. Uh, Kobe, LeBron, Bird, Magic, Kareem, Will Russell. That means that thirteen players right there. Kevin Durant. There's not a few guy in the top 15, Steph. There's not one guy in the top 15 with less than two rings. The rest is in the top 15. Please. The fuck? Okay. Yeah. Let, let the pussies of today's generation live the life that Bill Russell had to live while playing. Not respect. Let the, let the pussies of today, you won't respect it because what you just said is fucking blasphemous as hell. It's complete blasphemy because, again, you're watching a style of play that if he played today, he'd still be blocking all their fucking shots. He'd still be rebounding the fuck out of the ball. And that man played when the man had to sit in a different fucking room to eat. I get that. I get that. fuck out of here, bro. Stop it, man. This is he's telling about being on Instagram. He's not a top 15 player. All right, bro. With 11 rings. The captain of an 11 rings fucking team. Yeah, shut the fuck up, bro. That's stupid. I get that. That's stupid. That's stupid. That's just stupid. You know what? I'll find you another 15th player. Listen, listen, I'll guys, find listen. you another one. No, no, you might if, we don't, if we don't wrap this up, we're gonna, I'm done. We're gonna be honest. He can say stupid shit now. He's saying stupid shit and you know it. Bill Russell did not go through more shit than any of these fucking pussies do today. Instagram's worse than fucking being forced to eat in the fucking back of a building because you're not allowed in the building. Okay, fuck so out of here. Because I grew up poor and I can't do shit, that should, make, that should put me in the top player in, the, in history. Or you are poor? I'm just saying. He was a fucking multiple time MVP. What are you talking about? I'm just saying. All right, man. All right, man. In a certain situation. Yeah, I know. Like, Will was trash, too. Will wouldn't be top 15 either. Yeah, you're right. Kareem in the top 15. None of the centers are top 15. Rudy rant, so I'm going to let you. Only check. Only check. You've been talking through half my rant. I, no, I just I said a couple things because it, it was. It was Montreal, yeah, fucking I just gave you 15 guys that are better than that. That Luka Doncic will never be top 15 with one ring. He won't win a ring. I bet you right now he never wins a ring. Listen, listen, that's the crowd. That's the crowd. That was that was that was impactful. <laughs> that was entertaining. Fuck you, Nick Wright, you pussy ass bitch. Oh wow! These motherfuckers, I you were these say old motherfuckers sweat at the basketball like they. You like, like sweating? No, I'm talking about motherfuckers who think that the defense is not being played. It's just harder to play. Man, you, 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 you're full of shit, Nick. You don't even watch basketball. Right, Clearly, right, right. Fuck, fuck out of here! Fuck, fuck, fuck out of here! Is that a motherfucker being one step away, help side, or or two mm -hmm. steps away, help side? These motherfuckers is right there. They they are on their man. They're not helping as much. So when you're not helping as much, you have to guard the motherfucker for mm -hmm. point. By yourself, mm -hmm. that's help. Mm -hmm. With people who could dribble the ball a little bit better than they could back then. What the fuck you think is gonna happen? Gonna be blow mm -hmm. eyes all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. They're gonna drive the kick. Mm -hmm. They're gonna kick it. They're gonna shoot it. If you don't help, you're gonna get blown by the layup. Pick and roll is harder to guard because motherfucker can shoot the ball. Because the pick and roll, it takes more than just those two people to guard a motherfucker. The other person gotta come and help because it's mm -hmm. not on the switch. You yeah. gotta, Okay, okay. Yeah, don't let the fact that you get four steps for every shot you take. I know traveling, running with the ball from midcourt to the fucking rim, it doesn't make a difference. Allowing four or five steps. I watch games where guys get baskets after they take five fucking steps. And you're sitting here telling me that defense doesn't... Are you kidding? 
I can't. Love it with the ball. It's football. And shoot, and not get a travel call today. I can't, Again. I can't even say anything. Yeah, yet. because you don't even watch basketball clearly. Because I can see you. Dave Hunting's entire fucking career is a travel. His career is a travel. Because he looked at the Bulls and learned how to. to look at the Bulls. <laughs> They changed the rule. So in 2006, 7, 9, 10, they made that shit up for his ass. There wasn't no gather there, so then they let Fuck out again. There was no gather. They let LeBron. They made it up. They, oh my God. Oh my God. You tell me the fucking stealing it. But you know it's true. I can shut the fuck up of the video footage. Okay. A step back jumper 25 years ago was literally one step, not four. Because he doesn't have the ball completely yet. What are you doing? He has the ball. It's a And he won't even acknowledge it. Rudy, if I don't have. All right, bro. I'm done. Dude, you're just being stupid now. Oh you, you, you're being stupid now. You just you're doing the trolling shit no, and you're pissing me it's off. Hard to, it's hard to tell people who haven't played basketball in the last thirty years. Fuck, are you gonna? Did you, did you get away with that in college? Did I go? To did work? you get away with that in college? Have it. A fair step, step back, jump shot. The the ball wasn't really in my hand. That I can have it be in the air and then what? Yes, Rudy. Oh, fuck out of here, bro. Get out of here. Get out of here. Look, Get out of here. And, and, and carries were called also. Like they didn't call carrying in the 90s also. AI got called for carrying all the time. Imagine today. He did the run with the ball from mid court to a layup. AI did not get called for carrying. Oh my God. They called it. Right. Okay, go ahead. A couple of times. Yeah. And it's... All right. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to pull you guys to your corners. I have to pull you guys to your corners. Nick, you've been muted. Rudy, you've been muted. You guys have been muted. No one hears you. No one hears you. You've been muted. I had to make an executive decision. It's out of control. You guys are back. With that being said, we're going to go. The fighters are to their corners. We're going to go into another section of the show. And that's Don's. This is Nick's rant. I'm going to talk about fucking basketball. This is Go ahead. This is Don's oh, down. Right um, I'm going to say shit. I'll let you, let you talk, but you cut me off 46 times when I'm talking. You talk for 32 minutes, and I talk for two of them. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> you chopped me off in the first three. Okay. I just said something briefly. Go ahead. Go ahead, Don. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dean. All right. All right. We're going to, we're going to, I guess we're here. I guess we're, I guess, you know, just going to. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna back. We're getting into Don's dimes uh, while the guys cool off their jets. You got a little emotional here, bitches. But we're gonna continue to go with the show. Don's dimes, as you guys know, I just I threw I riffed, you know. Um, this show we've been dedicating a lot to sports, but this is not a sports show. It's really more of an entertainment show. Some of our episodes coming up, we're gonna be discussing television. We're going to be discussing, we've discussed music before. We're going to be discussing film. Uh, Don's Dime this week is about film. I saw a film the other day and I said to myself, this film would be a classic if it came out today. Guys, if there's any movie that you guys loved growing up that you can release today for the world to see. Because a lot of young people um, don't think the films that we love are classics, which is shocking. They, they don't really think that. But I saw a film the other day, and I said, if that came out today with how big sports is in the world. Sports was huge to us growing up, but sports now is everything. Remember the Titans would be the movie I would drop today. And I think it would resonate with a lot of people. It would be a classic if it came out today. Guys, if there's a movie, it doesn't matter what genre, horror, sports, anything that you guys can release today for the world to consume together. What film would it be? Me, remember the Titans. I thought I, thought, I loved it. Denzel, football, uh, civil rights issues, a lot of segregation, racism. There, there was just a lot of things that would resonate today with that film. So if there's a film that you guys can would release these days. It could be anything. What would be the film? I, I think I'll go with Soul Plane. I think we just to understand the magnitude of going on a flight. And that shit not going where they wanted to go. I think 
I mean, spirit is showing us spirit and and and, and frontier is showing us that frontier is really real. Like it's like it's no avoiding it. Like it was a comedic genius. I mean, I love the movie. Um, people talked about it as that it wasn't one of the funnier movies. It was. Um, I think because everybody bootlegged it, it didn't get the the time that it needed. But in today's day, um, the comedy that they had in there, um. It went over our heads at that point, but then as you keep watching it, like, damn, this shit is freaking hilarious. Um, you had pops in there, you had a whole bunch of people, you had uh you had um I was gonna say Nikki Parker. <laughs> you had uh Queen Comedy in there, you had Monique in there, you had a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of characters that was just in that movie. You had Snoop Dogg, you had uh it was just it was just a a real comedic movie that just didn't get the do that it needed to um maybe kevin hart was coming up at that time but um just right now with the how things are going with flights and things being delayed and that nature it's just a little bit of hood in it um you put some popeyes at um on a spirit flight right now you're like damn this is it i'm i'm home this is it i um this is something i will i will want to watch and i will want to not go on that flight but you know i would go on it because who doesn't like popeyes Fair. That's fair. That's fair. You you do some you do a wrench at me right there. It was a quick one. I had to come up with Soul yeah. Plan. I like Soul Plan. Don't get don't get the recognition it deserves. That's Don's Don. Rudy. What will be the film? God, you go from Don with you got Don with a real movie to Nick with a fucking slapstick stupid comedy, Mike. It was as a as a hood favorite. Bro, we know I know Nick, you love slapstick shit like Martin. Like if you I watch Martin now too and I realize how fucking dumb that show was. Oh when I was God. younger, I was like this Rudy. is so funny. I watch Rudy. it as an adult. You're it's the gonna... dumbest shit on earth. You Rudy. watch it today and you laugh more than you did then. You're going to run away all our black consumers because you're saying the dumbest shit in history. If really? You don't understand the fucking importance of fucking Martin. Even so, the, the, I didn't say that. I watched it. I watched it more than you did. I'm older than you. I was alive. You were like a two year old, bro. I was five. You were five. Okay. I was, well, how old was so, I? 16? In, in the 97, so I was five. No, no. I, I was, was seven. I was almost twenty then. Nine. I started when I was five, and I ended. When All I was right. Five. Okay. So if you were five, I'm eleven years older than don't, you, right? Don't, don't, don't. I was sixteen. Don't you ever talk about Martin like that? It's, it's a again. It's it was. I watched it as a kid. I enjoyed that. That was hilarious. As an adult, it's fucking dumb. Comedy was back then. No. All right. I know. Yes, and your your taste in comedy is the same. It's still slapstick stupid. But God bless. Soul Plane is the greatest movie on earth. I've never seen it. Thank God. Like snakes on the plane. You need Never to watch, seen it. You need to watch Soul Plane. Not interested. If we're going to, I mean, I, this, I still consider this a sports podcast. So I'm going to tell you the movie that I would want The Program. The Program came out in 1993. And the, the program changed. They actually changed the program. Considering the fact that how soft we are today. Half these movies you couldn't even bring out today because everyone's so goddamn sensitive, right? The program, they cut out a scene where these guys laid in the middle of the street on 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 on, on the high on the on the road where cars were riding by. So dumbass kids started lying in the street and getting run over by cars in real life. But that program, that movie, that movie, the program, it gave you a real insight into college football back then. That now is whatever, but I thought that movie was fantastic. It showed the pressures of going through a Heisman race and all that shit. I mean, with the fake school that didn't exist, but it, it that movie. I mean, watching those two guys and them, you know, now I saw one of the most disgusting scenes I'd ever seen was when these two guys basically smashed arms. If you've seen the program, did you see the program? No. Oh my god. You played football for a career. You never saw the program. Five, oh, oh, you were five when you watched Martin, though. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You were five when you watched Martin, but you didn't see a football movie, and you played Little League football. Right? Yeah, it was a stud. Uh, all right, then. Okay. These two dudes punched each other in both arms and spit in each other's mouths. It was the most disgusting shit I'd ever seen, and two of my teammates did that dumbass shit in the locker room before a game. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? But to me, for back in the day, that was a classic football movie. I loved it. That's it. And I want the real version, not the one that they chopped out. Because we saw it the first day. They chopped out that scene in the street 
because people were getting run over by cars. I'm done. <laughs> all right, all right. Don's time. So it got it, it turned left real quick. Yeah, shout out to the program. I'm gonna go look it up. It has to be on one of the 17 streamers out there. Uh, that being said, we're gonna go in uh, to the association. Shout out to Adam Silver. Uh, best five duels of the current NBA or all time. What are what what, what are we, uh, current? I mean, what are no. the f- top five duos of the NBA? You guys go. Go ahead. Stop riffing. Make it quick, Nick. I've got an hour for you. You should have known this is your topic. No, 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 no. Number five, we're going with a combination that won a championship together before. We still believe in them. Um, they can still get it done. Last year, they went to the conference finals. Are you, are you done, Rudy? <laughs> are you fucking done? We're going with AD and Braun at number Yeah, five. you know what? I, I should have known. You're actually Nick Wright. Fuck. How am I? I put them at five. Do they not? Oh, you five? you will suck him off no matter what. I I, I respect LeBron. I'm not a, a fan. I'm not one of those guys on him. I'm just telling you that that combination. They won a championship together. They they just went to the conference finals. So I mean, what what are we saying here? Is that is that so wrong? Is it so wrong? Okay, at number four, we're going with um everything that they thought that James Harden and Embiid was gonna be. We're going with Tom, we're going with Maxi and Embiid. Um, I just think that Maxi, when it comes to playoff time, he'll be somebody who will not shy away from the moment. He'll score the ball when they need to. Um, all we need is Embiid to get his help right. We know Embiid is a baller, so we're gonna go Embiid and Maxi at four. At three, <laughs> Damon Freak. Damon Freak, one of the best pick and roll company. What? 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 Rudy. Un- unmute yourself and tell me how you feel. Go ahead. Tell me how you feel. Tell me I, how you feel. I, we only got a certain amount of time left, so I don't want to waste it on this nonsense. Go ahead. No, I want to hear how you feel. Damon Free, what's Dame hates, Dame's having the worst season of his career. He's having He's, the worst season of his career. I know you picked him in the finals last week or whatever. He is having the worst season of his career. They are not meshing well. There's a reason they're 10 games out. There's a reason their defense sucks. They are not a good duo. They will not be there next year. He hates it in Milwaukee. About he will not be there next year. They have not been a good duo. They are not anywhere near what we ex- what you expected them to be, or maybe what anyone ex- you didn't know because I knew giving up a great defensive player like Drew Holiday was what a mistake. Are, what are they? Go the ahead. East? Are they second in the East? They're ten games out, bro. Behind They're the ten Celtics. games out. Everybody's ten games behind the Celtics. Seven, eight games. All right, man. Talking about they have the third or fourth worst defense in basketball. But go ahead. They have one, of, and they have the third or fourth best offense in basketball. Great, and it's not because of Dame. Dame's shooting as one of his career low. His career low in shooting yeah. since he was a rookie. Him and, and come on now, they're still a dynamic duo. You're talking about the best, one of the best pick and roll options in the game. You got Dame coming off it, shooting the ball still. He's gonna make it. You're not gonna sag off him. What, what are you gonna do? Back off Dame? No, we're not gonna do that. And then, all right. Besides that, number two, we're gonna go with. Um, what Donald top five Tatum and Jalen Brown. Y'all know I think Jalen Brown is better than y'all know I think Jalen Brown is better than Oh Jaylen. my god. This is a duo? Yeah. Go next. Yeah, mother lover. We're talking about a team that went to five, six conferences. You mean, you mean a duo where it says here you go, I go, you go, I go, you go. Oh my god. Go ahead. Keep on. Duo, right? Motherfuckers. Who play. No, it's what they love well together. Oh, how much how much conference how much conference championships have they been to together? How, much, how, many, how, many, how many have they lost? How many championships have they been to? How many have they lost? How many championships have they have zero? How many they championships? They lose. They're going to lose this year again, too. So if we're going by that, then you're not going to pick any duo. A, du- a, duo, a duo is based to, I'm, first of all, we have different definitions, but go ahead. We have different definitions. Both of you motherfuckers who play well off each other, both of you motherfuckers who could guard. Uh, they they don't play well off each other. That's the, been proven. That's why we beat them last year. No. They don't play well off each other. No, they, they just, don't. They, they just lost to us, man. One of the teams that's, that's been their nemesis for the longest time. But this t- this duo has gotten to, what, five conference finals or six? Yeah. They won one yeah. championship. What are you talking about? They both average 27 a game. Yeah. They, not, doesn't make them a good duo. That's why, they read, that's why people were saying they should trade Jalen Brown last year. Yeah, did they do it? That's what people have been saying that for the longest. They think that two people can't coexist, but they have been coexisting. They just haven't gotten over the hump. If they get over the hump one year, what are you going to say? They were a great, great. 
Okay. Great. Shut the but they, they they needed that a seven foot four center to do it. Yeah. They were better than us last year, Nick. And I told him like they lost. And I told him I need to do that. They've been better than us for five years. They lost to us two or three times. I mean, okay, but see, poor Rudy um interrupted me like he always does. He talked about me. Um and the number one duo, we already know who that is. So there's, there's no need to explain about their combination. Um because they have the best player in the league, by far, by far the best player in the league, Joker. So whoever you put next to him, you're all automatically up here. But you put a, a clutch player like Murray with him, and people say, oh, he hasn't made an all-star game yet. No, he's Jamal not. Murray's a, Jamal Murray's a stud. He's never going to make an all-star in the West. Just, he's a stud. It's just never going to happen. It's just too many yeah. point guards over there. Because it's a popularity contest. You got Luka. So you're going to be over Curry, Luka, and, and Shea? No, not going to happen. That's three guards right there. Never going to happen. But he is a guy that... Him and him and him and Joker is just dynamic together. Joker with them with them handoff screens because he just he just has such a big body to get him around. So he frees up everything for Murray. Murray's just a dynamic shooter. That fadeaway shots, butter. He just clutch and then you just know what Joker's gonna bring. He's gonna bring you a triple double, 27, 20, 25 and nine, ten boards, ten assists, you know, well fifteen, fourteen boards, you know. No, he does. Just the most dynamic duo in the league right now. What what? Go ahead, tell me. I, I want to go. I don't want to get cut off. Man. Go ahead, go ahead. I actually want to go. We haven't had a time limit. You know what I mean? You have no respect for it. You keep trapping people. You're not gonna have five back. I'll make it simple. I'll make it real quick. I looked at duos as big and a little, not two wings, big and a little. That's how I view duos. That's how I view duos. Duos have to play off of each other. I don't believe that Jason Datum and Jalen Brown play off each other well at all. I think they're, they're you hand the ball, I hand the ball. They're better this year because of Porzingis. And Drew, Ho- and Drew Holiday's made a difference for them. You got, you got to remember that. They're not just the two guys that they were last year. Of course not. Drew Holiday's made a huge difference for them. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. Fuck. You just talked. Talk about Hey, that's on mute. You kept telling me to talk. I muted myself. And you no, kept telling me to unmute. You were it's fine. on recording. Houston, Alperin, Sanguine, and Jalen Green. Those are two young ass dudes. Again, you throw your phone. You got LeBron and AD. They're not a good duo anymore. They fucking are a nine seed. Houston, I'm looking at guy a big and a little. This kid, this guy, the sanguine, he's really good. It just shows you don't watch basketball because you obviously go to the most easy shit like calling out fucking LeBron and AD. What's Houston? Jalen Green's Jalen Green's a stud. You know it. I know you think he's good. Don't tell me you don't think he's good. He's okay. Um, again. Duos, a big and a little. I'm not using two wings. I use a big and a little. That, that that's going to be a very scary duo going forward. This team got a lot better from last year. They're close. They are. A cl- they're close. Number four, Shea, SGA, and Chet Holmgren. I know they suck too. They're only in their number one seed right now. Um, they suck. No, I didn't say that. Shea, nah, nah, they suck, right? You're about to tell me they suck. Yeah. No, Shea Gilders Alexander is averaging 30, 31 a game. Holmgren's team. a rookie who's averaging 17 a game. He's a going to be a dominant big, blocking shots defensively. There's a reason that OKC is good. SGA can put it in the hole, and they have a great rim protector down there. And they play off of each other exceptionally. And Chet Holmgren can, Chet Holmgren can also shoot. So he's not just a fucking stand in the po- in, by the rim fucking center. He can shoot the ball. That's going to be a very dangerous, whether you think they're completely inexperienced or not, and you think they have no chances here against the Lakers, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with for a very long time. Presume they keep these, all these guys there. Not to mention they have a third kid there that I just saw that they who's Williams. like 21 years old. Um, what hell's his name? Williams. Yeah, he went to St. Mary's. Williams. Santa Clara. He's a he's a first or second year player. He's having averaging like nineteen a game. Same that's league. a serious yeah. I think that's them. It's a serious team. Third, I got Joe, presuming health. Joel Embiid and and Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey is a superstar. Tyrese Maxey is an absolute stud. I love that kid. That kid is balls, man. I wish we had him down here, man. I would trade everybody on our team except for Jimmy to go get that kid. Okay. That kid's a fucking beast. I love that kid. And I mean, not to mention we traded. For Rogier and Kyle Lowry ate us up yesterday. I'm fucking disgusted. I cannot understand this. Of course, Jimmy doesn't want to play because he's got a boo-boo on his foot. 
half our team is injured again. Because we have the greatest fucking training staff on the planet that everyone's always hurt. Number two, and you'll probably tell me I'm crazy because that's what you do. But you know what? My duo has busted your duo's ass four times this year. No, De'Aaron I, Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. That is a hell of a great duo that people ignore because they're in Sacramento. I they like played that. in New York. They played in L.A. They played in Miami, Dallas, Chicago, any major city. Those guys would be raved about. But because they're in Sacramento and they're not on national TV all that often, people ignore them. Like De'Aaron that. Fox is a beast. He's a beast. And Sabonis is a beast. They don't have as much talent around them as some of these other teams do. But those two, my God, they play off each other so well on pick and roll. It's crazy. I love those two. Go ahead. And the number one is Jokic, Jokic and Murray. I mean, Jokic and Murray. Yes. No, no need to talk about that. And, and, and realistically, people will say, oh, well, you could replace. No, you couldn't replace Murray. You could not replace Murray with somebody else. You could not. You need a certain type to play with Jokic. You can't just throw anybody out there. Dominate the ball. Jamal Murray is cerebral as fucking hell. He is a he's a superstar. And they can sit here and say whatever they want. When games matter, that dude is on. I, I, I mean, he petrifies me as a Heat fan. That dude scares. He is the scariest guy on the floor when they're playing. That shot because, is smooth. Huh? His shot is so smooth. Oh, it's, he's, unbe- he's unbelievably good. And, and people ignore him. And it's a popularity contest. I get it. Do I think you could put Luka next to Jokic and do that? No, I don't. I don't think you could do that. I don't think you could put just anybody next to Jokic and get that. Jamal Murray and those two, those two guys, they play off each other so well. I mean, it is, it's not close. So you told me this, you, you think it should be a big and a small. The only big, only two smalls I had was Tatum and, and Brown. And one is 6'9", and one is 6'7". I mean. You pick two wings. I mean, I don't consider that. Okay. And, and I don't. And I don't believe they're a good duo. I don't. I don't. I don't believe they're a good duo. Them going to five, come on. I don't care about that. I care about how they look when they play. It doesn't look. It doesn't flow. It's not flowing. It is. You take the ball and I take the ball. It's. Yeah. Do they run pick and roll off each other? No. It works. For no. Them. It works. For them. So, so you want to call? It, it doesn't work when it matters. When the game slows down, they're not going to score 125 a game I'm in the Jordan, playoffs. I'm Jordan and Pippen to do it. Yeah, they are. You're right. That'd be the one that 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 defeats that changes that changes it. But it wasn't. They didn't run the offense. That Nick, you know how their offense was. They ran the triangle offense. This is not what is running Boston. You goddamn well know it. They really freaking they hand one guy the ball and then they hand the other guy the ball. They never play off each other. Pippen and Jordan always played off of each other. Always. No, one one person threw the ball to the other guy on the block and let him work. I'm I'm good. Hey, you just said you just said the Houston duo was top five. I think they're a top five duo. Again, my definition of duo is different from yours. I will put Miles Turner and, and Tyrese Halliburton ahead of them. Maybe you would. I yeah. thought about them. Or I C- thought about them. Siakam and and Halliburton over them. Jalen Brunson <laughs> and Randall over them. Come on, uh, no. that, that fifth pick was terrible. I'm All right, fine. And your LeBron pick was terrible because you have a 6'9 power forward with a 6'10 center. Oh, wow. Creative. He runs the ball. He's, he's, he, come on. Mm-hmm. All right, man. For the most part. But they're so great that they're – I mean, you know what? You want to tell me about mine? Yours is so great. They're a 9 seed. But according to you, that's the top – two of the top and 12 players well, in the NBA team, right now. They, they can't win, and they've not missed games all year. I'm trying to get to the next topic, Nick. Just move yeah. on. So oh no, I just wanted to I just wanted to kill your your, your conversation because you said kill what? Name. You don't even know who the hell the guy is. That's what makes it so sad. You even know who the guy that I said from Houston is? Who you talking about? Come on, now. say Glenn. Not Jalen Green. You know who the other guy is? Yeah, that man's good. I love him. I love him. You love him. So why would you say it's a horrible? He plays like some bonus, but he's not an AD strategy. All right, man. And, All right, man. And Green is, and come on, Jalen is not, come on, Green is not an All right. All right. Okay. That's your opinion. Go ahead. Your 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 great Randall top two of the top twelve players in the NBA are 35, 36, and thirty. Randall and Brunson is better than them. Halliburton and, and Siakam is better than them. Hot Cheetos and and Ruffles is better than them. Oh, come on now, it's, it's, it's a right. lot of better combinations. Right. Come on, man. Hot sausage and pickle legs is better than that. Come on, don't mm-hmm. do that. We got way better combinations than that. Don't do mm-hmm. that. Don't mm-hmm. do. 
Who was your other one? Who was your fourth again? Who was my fourth? Max you forgot already. Max who was your third? Who was your third then? Uh, Damon. Damon. Yeah. Oh yeah, Damon Giannis. The two guys that can't play together. Okay. Yeah. They're in the second seed. What are, what are we That's doing? A, oh, okay. All right. Fine. So Jerry, is, is it seed based then? If it's seed based, then the Lakers, should, the AD and LeBron shouldn't be there either. Because you use different arguments to back what you say up. So for for Damon and Giannis, it's their seeding. You just, for you just Tatum and Brown, it's the, where they, how good they are they as a team. The but for LeBron and AD, it's because of what? Because they just was in the conference finals and they won a championship. It was ju- they were just in the conference finals, which we already know was created by a bunch of injuries to everybody else, no. and they got swept. And they so, were- again, and this year they're, third, they're a nine seed again. And they're Houston, still a nine seed. And then Houston is the 15th, 30th seed. Great. Right? They're young. Okay, man. Fine. That's not a, that's we disagree. A, What's new? So that's not I was done, Donald, but he won't shut the fuck up. That's not a duo for right now. That's a duo for when you turn 48 in, in three years. I'm talking about right now. Yeah, and the Lakers ain't going nowhere. I bet you a thousand dollars the Lakers don't go to the finals. You want to pick that bet this time? No, because I already told you that Denver is the best team in the West. No. Now, if the Lakers play anybody else. I rock with him. I told you this already. Stop trying to goat me until you already got me last week with that shit. Yeah, and you you, you called back later to say no. You made me come out here and say foolishness. I told you Denver got their number. It's easy to make you say foolishness. That's the gift that you have. No, you already said Houston, so that's the dumbest shit I ever I think that's a great young talent, a young duo, a great young duo. Yeah, Just like, like Shea, Gilchrist Alexander, and Chet Holmgren, according to you, are not a top five duo. But okay. That's like putting peanut butter with ketchup. That's Guys, what you just made. In, peanut in. butter and ketchup. He just told me peanut butter and ketchup is a good duo. Okay, go ahead. Really then, guys. Um, we're coming to a close. We've actually gone over, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but we'll, we'll try better next time. We're going to wrap <laughs> the show up with uh, Combat Corner and discuss um, our new segment to the show. <laughs> that combat, we discuss all things MMA, boxing, all different things in the combat world. Rudy, how do you want to kick off this segment? I'm, I'm sorry. I gotta, I'm sorry. I got to let the listeners know. So we have a little side chat on a, on a, next to us. And Donald's been telling us to shut the fuck up and listen for the past five to ten minutes. That's just fucking hilarious to me. I'm, I have. You keep me talking. And, me and Rudy get it. You were talk- okay. I'm sorry. I muted myself. You literally kept talking. Just know how passionate that me and Rudy right, bro. about things, man. We, we my damn it. rant took longer because you wouldn't stop talking either. Shit. What do you think we have to take? We'll see. Anyhow, the, I, I had the pleasure of going to the bare knuckle fighting championship on Friday night. I was a guest of uh, all in sports management. Um, they had a couple of fighters on that card. Um, if people haven't seen bare knuckle fighting, it is as exciting a sport as there is. It is not boxing. It is not MMA. There's no kicking. For those that don't know, it is straight bare knuckle hands. You're throwing hands. And in this particular event, they had it outside at Dolphin Mall in Miami. And they had it in a ring that was the size of a phone booth. When I say they had you, if you were six foot tall, you, your reach would have you at the middle of the ring. It was that tight. It was... I mean, you have no choice but to fight. There's no running around. There's no circling. It is you're throwing, throwing, throwing. Typically, they have a bigger ring, but for this, they had a smaller one. It was an awesome experience. Um, I've been to bare knuckle stuff before. I enjoyed a great deal. I, you know, some former MMA fighters are doing it because they really had no no ground game. So it's not, you know, the UFC or Bellator or whatever organization before wasn't conducive to them. But I had the chance. But Howard Davis. This kid, um, six two and one, he had a big second round finish um, over Sean Wilson. He was the main event. He's a Broward County guy from South Florida. You know, he was coming off of a loss in the cha- in a championship fight where he just didn't look right that night for whatever reason. But this kid has fought five times in twelve months, and that's one thing about these bare knuckle guys. They're gonna fight. They're not taking six months off, eight months off, nine months off. They're coming to fight, and they fight, and they fight, and they fight. The stuff is exciting. The environment is dope. I went to it at the Hard Rock a few months ago as well. But when um, another one of All In's fighters was was on that card, um, Brian Duran El Gallo, tough ass dude. I mean, one of the, I mean, a great great fight in that in that card. But there was, I mean, enjoyed it very much. 
Rosa Rodriguez is another fighter on All In. She won her fight in the co-main event. That fight, these, just so people know, it's five rounds, two-minute rounds. These are quick rounds. It's boom, boom, boom. You know, and the first round, she got unloaded on big time. And she ate a lot of shots. But she, that, the other girl, um, Monica Franco, she, she gassed out. And, and Rosa just started teeing off on her ass. I mean, and she stopped her. I think it was in the third round. <clears throat> there was a couple of quick knockouts as well. I mean, there. That's the one thing about bare knuckle. You're not going to see in the UFC often. I mean, these, there are some fights that last 10 seconds, 15 seconds. You don't see that as much in the UFC. Um, are they as skilled as MMA fighters? Probably not. You know, but for what? But asking them MMA got to go over this. It is Mike Perry loves it. He's a main event in a couple of months against Tiago Alves. So there are lots of MMA guys that do go over after, you know, they're tired of having kicking legs. They'll throw hands. But awesome event. I enjoyed it a great deal. Thank you to Victor Demesman and, and All In Management. You know, awesome event. So uh, and we'll be at a lot of these going forward. I, I do have some video that I posted um, of that fight, and I will be putting together another compilation of, of the fights so people can take a look. And then finally on Saturday, we have uh, another UFC fight. Oh, by the way, BKFC has fights literally every weekend until the end of April. Every Saturday there's another card. So go check it out. They put it on FUBU TV. And um, next, but this Saturday you have Rose Namajunas. Thug Rose is back in the cage, octagon. She's fighting against Amanda Hibas. And the rest of the card is whatever. But Thug Rose is back in the cage and, you know, looking forward to seeing what if she's uh, – going to be the fighter that we used to see or if she's one that's going to be on the retirement block soon enough. So excited to see that one. That's all I got for this weekend. Um, back to you, Donald. I like awesome. to bring up with you in the fucking ring right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right in the fucking Okay. okay. We're, 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 we're good. You won't miss. I got a big head. It seems that we're going to wrap it up here, guys. Uh, this was a uh... <clears throat> A very, very fruitful and entertaining episode. Things got real passionate. That just means, guys, listeners, uh, women, we missed each other. That's all that means. We got very, very passionate here. We missed each other. Uh, next week's episode, we're going to throw in some stuff. To me, you think Nick's, Nick's going to have his picks in. Um, we're just trying to every week give you guys better content, be a lot more conducive to what the listeners are asking for. We pay attention. We read all comments. We read everything that you guys hate about Rudy. We read it all. We read it all. Um, but we hope that we're entertaining you guys. And if you guys have suggestions, throw them, throw, them, throw, them in, throw them in the comments. Not just how much you hate us or love us. Throw some suggestions in the comments, and we'll be having on some guests coming in. Rudy, where can they find us before we segue out? Come on now, podcast on Facebook and Instagram, and come on now, pod on Twitter, X, and TikTok. I am posting videos. We are posting stuff on TikTok. It's a different platform. I'm not all that used to it, but stuff is being posted everywhere. And please subscribe to the YouTube page more than anything. Subscribe. If you pick one, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Awesome. Nick, any last thoughts before we jump out of here? Man, quick thought, man. Um, Kyrie Irving just hit one of the best shots of all time to finish the game. I know it wasn't in a Big time moment like the playoffs, but he already shown he could do that. Is Kyrie Irving a top 75 player? He wasn't on the list. So I'm going to say, um, his talent wise, he's definitely a top 75 player. But when it comes to the whole picture of him, I know a lot of people argue about it. He's not a top 75 player. I put him in the Brandon Roy situation. If Brandon Roy played, he'll be a, a top 75 player. If he played his whole career and didn't get hurt. Kyrie, his situation is him not playing enough games due to whatever circumstances him being hurt or, you know, just some Kyrie shit that goes on. And that just subtracts from his greatness. I will, I, I love his talent, but his greatness, his greatness is being subtracted from just because of the other things that came with it. On the court, talent-wise, top 75. All the other things, it just literally put him just a little bit out of it. Um, but that was an amazing shot he made. Damn, nobody else can do that. He stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. I don't give a goddamn. He stepped out of bounds. I don't care if he stepped in the third fucking row, Rudy. That shit was amazing. 
It was when he stepped out of bounds, and that's the crazy part is that the NBA didn't even look at it. And and he's been amazing this year. I mean, no problems, at least that we he's heard. He's top about. 75 to me. He's unbelievable. Just the little things, man, Rudy. I think he's, he's I don't care about I don't I don't judge on off court shit. He's a top seventy five player. But it stops he's him unbelievable. It stopped him from playing some games and things. Just, I, I, I just care. More games. That's he's it. played a, he's he's been in the league for a decade, bro. And, and Brandon Moore's career was ended in five or six years. Who? Kyrie Irving's been at a high level for a decade. He's a top no, seventy five player. He's been out a lot for a lot of that decade. Okay. So that's just my oh. closing remarks on that. Well, that was a good one because I saw the highlights and those were amazing. Always been a huge uh, Uncle Drew fan. So hopefully we can have him on the show one day and talk about his greatness. And uh, what did young kids say? Give him his flowers. That's what the young kids say these days. No, you anyway, definitely deserve it. Definitely. We're out for this week. Come on now, the podcast. We love entertaining you guys. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. See you guys next week. you for watching come on now the podcast please be sure to subscribe like comment and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content you can also find us on facebook and instagram at come on now podcast and x and tiktok at come on now pod thank you again for supporting this channel